Hi guys, Adam here. Uh, in this video, we're gonna create a grade for a vertical jump height that has a percentage of the maximum vertical jump height. And so what we have here is we have dates and we have athletes. They Let's just say that they tested vertical jumps on, on these dates. And we have their vertical jump heights. And we're gonna translate this vertical jump height into a percentage of their maximum that they have achieved of all time. So I'm gonna do this in two ways, but before I go into that, I want you to notice that this is a table. If I go to table design, it has a name, it's called table one, and that's okay for me for right now, but that's very important as we go through this stuff. And I do advise that you keep pretty much all of your data when you can inside tables, especially data entry, um, when you're entering data, enter it into tables. Visualizations are, are another story. But, so with this grade, we're gonna go equals average ifs, because we want the average of something, and we want the average of the vertical jump height. So since I'm in a table, I can just do an open square bracket, and it'll tell me all the things inside the table. If you're on a Mac, that might not work, but essentially, we want the average of VJ. We don't want the average of everyone, we just want the average for this person for this date, which is essentially their value for that date. So the average vertical jump height, comma, when, open bracket, athlete, when the athlete, comma, is equal to that athlete, which is this guy, or the guy in this row. And you can do the same thing. Let me just remove that at, at athlete, and I'll click on it. So we want the average vertical jump height when the athlete is, and I can just click on him, and the same thing will happen. And also, open square bracket, the date, close the square bracket, comma, is equal to this date, whatever the date is in this row. And I'm gonna close this off and click enter. And all we're gonna get is we're gonna get the same thing that we had before. That's the first step in the formula. The second part, we're gonna do in two ways. And maybe I'll just copy this over now. I'll call this grade two, doesn't really matter. So we have the average, let me copy this over into grade two also, because it'll make it easier. Now we want to divide that by the maximum that the person has ever achieved. So I'm going to use max ifs. If you don't have it, don't worry, because that, that's what I'm going to do in the next one. So divided by max ifs, the max of what? Again, open square bracket VJ, the maximum vertical jump, height, comma, when, open square bracket, athlete, when the athlete, comma, is equal to the at athlete, or the athlete in the row that we're looking at. And we don't care about the date anymore because this is the maximum of, of all time. I'm gonna click enter. Now what this number is, it's, it's a number from zero to one, and what this number is is a percentage of their maximum. We don't have to worry about just, if you wanna display it as a percentage, if you go to home, right now it's displayed as a number, if you type in percentage, it'll change and you can manipulate the number of um, decimals and things like that. I'm not gonna do that <coughs> for now, but so we did this formula, that works. Now, if you don't have max ifs, there's another way to do this. I'm gonna go to the grade two. Instead of dividing the average by the max ifs, we're gonna do divide it by max. Max of what? Well, before we get into that, we have to say if, we're gonna do the same thing. At, at, if the athlete equals, open square bracket, at athlete, let me capitalize that to be consistent, comma, so if this is true, then we want the maximum of, open square bracket, vj, and I'm gonna close that off and click enter. And notice these two formulae are identical, okay? these numbers are gonna be the same. And what I'm gonna do first, or what I'm gonna do before anything else, is I'm gonna say if error, if there's an error with anything going on in this formula, comma, I want it to say blank. Just in case there's an error, I want it to be blank. That's what the double quotes means. Click enter. And since I, I really don't need one of these formulae anymore, I'm just gonna delete this and I'm gonna call this grade again. But now you know how to do it. Okay, so this is, so now we have a percentage of their maximum. 
And I want to take this one step further and create a visualization from this. And we can do that. We can probably create something pretty cool. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet, but let's get it started. So I'm going to create a new sheet. And maybe this is a daily monitoring dashboard. So I'm just going to increase this row height, uh, make it 40. And I'm going to say jump, jump height monitoring dashboard, even though it's just going to be one thing. And now what's going to go in this dashboard? Maybe I have names, the names of the athletes. And this is actually a good opportunity to get the list of names in two different ways because you might not have access to one of them. I'm going to go equals unique. Open parenthesis, ask me what do I want a unique list of essentially. And if I start typing in table one, because that's the name of my table in the performance sheet, it'll pop up. I can click on it. Open square bracket. Now it gives me all the items in my sheet. And I click athlete, close the square bracket, close the parenthesis. That's that's it. That's the formula. Click enter. Now I have a unique list of my athletes. And if you want to add in some criteria if in case there's an error or something, you can always do the if error, comma, blank. Now you may not have access to that formula. So if we're going to do this the other way, I'm going to do equals index. And I have a video on this. I, I don't know the name of it. It's pro, it, I think it's called no unique or no problem. Here's another way to do it or something like that. But anyways, index, so what do we want? Let's say table one, open square bracket, athlete. I want to get a list of the athletes, comma, and then I want to match, open parentheses, so there are two formulae going in here so far, zero, oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to do count if, or comma, count if, Open uh, parenthesis, whatever this cell is here, colon, and it automatically did that for me in my version, but you're going to do colon to the same cell, so B3 to B3, and we're going to lock in one of these or put dollar signs around the before, uh, before the letter. All right, now it's just being weird. But So maybe I put dollar signs before the B, dollar sign before the 3, colon, B3 again. Then we do a comma, table one, athlete, I was going to say athlete name, but it's just athlete. And I'll let you look at that for one second. When we're done with that, we're going to do comma zero and close off this entire thing with a bunch of parentheses. And now this is important. We're going to hold down control and shift when we click enter. If we don't, Oops, excuse me. I messed up somewhere. I should have put a parenthesis right here. Oops, right here. And remove one from there. And I'm going to click enter. For me, it might work. You, it might not. So notice that that's exactly what I typed in. I'm going to click back into the formula. And I'm going to hold down control and shift and click enter. Or you can hold down command and shift and click enter. When I do that, Notice these squiggly brackets on either side of the formula. Cool. And if I drag this down, eventually I'm going to get errors. And that looks kind of ugly. I'm going to drag it down. And then I get errors. So I'm going to click undo up here. And I'm going to add in an if error formula before this. I-F-E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. If there's an error with this formula, comma, let's make it blank. Or quote, quote. And then close the parenthesis. I'm going to hold down Control, Shift, and Enter. It might be Command, Shift, and Enter for you if you're on a Mac. I'll click Enter. I did it right because I see the squiggly brackets on either side. Now I'm going to drag this down. And even if I go beyond the last name, we still get a unique list of names here. Okay, now that we did that, I'm going to remove this. Okay, now we know how to get a unique list of names in two different ways. And for the remainder of this stuff, I am going to, whoa. Um, for the remainder of this stuff, I am just going to use max ifs and all the formulae that I have access to. And if you don't, I apologize. Um, maybe you can find some resources to help you get it done. So the next step is that we're going to pull in our grade value that we had before. And I'm just going to type in grade here. 
And the way that we do that is very similar to what we did in this table to get um, the, aver the average ifs portion of this table. So I'm going to click or I'm going to type in equals average ifs. I want the average of table one, open square bracket, grade. I want the average grade, close the square bracket, when, comma, table one, open square bracket, athlete, when the athlete in table one, close the square bracket, comma, is equal to this guy, or whoever's, and if I drag this down, it'll kind of update. I'm going to lock in column A. It doesn't really matter, at least for this. So I'm saying I want the grade of this athlete, um, but now I need to give it a date, or I need, or I can just get their average grade from all their grades, but now we have a couple different ways of doing this. Let me type in the first part of this formula first. So comma, table one, and also when comma, table one, the date, and now it gets fun. Now the date has to be equal to something. And what we can do, if we want this always to be the most recent data, we can do comma, max, open parenthesis, table one, open square bracket, date close the square bracket, close the parenthesis, and then close our next parenthesis. And what I'm going to do is, before we get into this, I'm going to say, before, if there's an error with this formula right here, I'm going to go, if error, if there's an error with anything going on in here, comma, let's say, quote, no data. Quote, just in, not have it be blank. It's, it's fine. Then I'll close the parenthesis and click enter. Now we have a date. Now what we have here, let me just drag this down to the last guy. And if I drag it down, it'll probably start saying no data. It does. Okay. So now what we have here is if we convert this, I just went up here into, into general and I type in percentage. And I'm going to remove a decimal. Maybe I'll remove two. It looks cleaner that way. Now we have their grade for their late for the latest date. But we can make this more fun, and I and I want to make it more fun. So I'm going to I'm going to insert a row. Doesn't matter that much, and I'm going to add something that says select date. It, it looks kind of ugly right now. Maybe I'll add in another thing to give space at some point, and maybe we want to enter in a date here, um, and we want to pick the date that that we see their grade, so that we can look at different dates. Now. The only thing we have to do here is we have to change this max date here. Like, so we're looking for the average grade for this athlete for a date that is right now the max date. But instead of the date that is the max date, we can have the date that's whatever's in this cell. So let's change that. So instead of the max date, we want the table, we want the date that is equal to whatever date is in this cell. And I'm gonna put dollar signs around this or what I can, do, and again, I'll, I guess I'll go over this again. If I hold down the function key on my computer and I click F4, dollar signs automatically go around it. And if I click them again, it goes around the number. Click them again, it goes around the letter. If I click it again, they go off. So I'm holding down function key and clicking F4 to put the dollar signs around that. You can do it manually or it might differ on, depending on what PC you have. I'm gonna click enter and there's no data. And I'm going to drag this down to the last person. And there's no data for anybody. Well, that makes sense because there's no data in here. So I'm going to go to my performance sheet and just look for a date. 3-6-2020 is a date in our data set. I'm going to do 3-6. I think it'll probably automatically go to 2020. I don't like the formatting, but when I type it in, now I have data. And it's for that date. I'm assuming. I'm not going to ch check it with you. Um, and maybe I want to change this to be a short date that, of that cell. So now we can select the date. And I'm going to look for another date. 4-6-2020. So we have data. It's showing up. I'm going to type in 4-6 now. And all the numbers change. Now, I'm going to take, take a second here. And I might end the video here, actually. Uh, just keep just keep going why not all right i'll just keep going
So now we need to think about what we want to look at visually for this. And the way that I like to do this, or the, the way that I would probably do this is I want to be able to control colors and categories of colors. And maybe I want, what I'm thinking right now is that there's a bar chart going this way, um, horizontally for each person. Uh, and the color of that bar is based on this grade or what percentage of their maximum jump height they, they achieved on this day. Because I, I need colors to, to quickly tell me pretty much who's doing what or who's uh, fatigued and who's not according to the jump height test or whatever we're looking at. So the way that I'm going to do this is I know that I want a horizontal bar. And I know that with bar charts, you need if you want different colors, you need to segregate the data into categories. And I want to be able to control the, those categories. I'm going to do this all on this sheet just so it's easier to understand on this video. But ideally, you should probably have a different sheet called a reference sheet where your kind of control panel is, where you, where you adjust numbers and things like that. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I'm just going to call this reference, um, but it's really our visualization page too. Or maybe I have a, like a, uh, this is our, our, our control panel. I'm going to type in number one, and I'm going to type in 0 0.999, 0 0.9, 0 0.899, 0 0.8, and then 0 0.799 and zero. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up data for categories where I'm going to set up four different colors, one, two, three, four. This color is going to be red, and if you got anywhere between zero and 79.9% of your maximum jump height, you're going to be red. And if you're between 80 and 89.9%, you're going to be, I don't know, orange. Between 90 and 99.9%, you're going to be green. And if you set a PR, let me just put that, let's say PR, good, okay, bad. Um, and then, you know, let's let's make you gold or something like that. That's a pretty cool thing. And now next to this, let's just set up our categories for our graph. I'm going to say PR, good, okay, and bad. Now our categories are set up. And what we're going to tell Excel to do is we're essentially going to say, put the grade for this person into the category that it, that it fits in. And so they're going to be blank. Some guys are going to be blank. For example, on this day, this value for alpha is going to show up in the well, it should show up in the OK category and nowhere else. So I hope that makes sense. And now we're pretty much ready to make our chart. So what I'm first going to do is I'm going to select all this stuff that I did. And I'm just going to drag it down here so that it lines up with this stuff. And you'll see why in a second. Now we can create our calculations for our chart. And I could copy and paste some stuff to make it much easier. But let's just do it from scratch again because it's a good learning opportunity, and then we'll copy and paste from there. So for the PR, I'm going to say equals average ifs, table one, open bracket, grade. I want to get the grade from table one, comma, if table one, open bracket, athlete, close the square bracket, if the athlete, comma, is this guy here, I'm going to click inside the formula, lock column A, because I'm probably going to copy this formula, paste it over columns, and I don't want the column to move. But I, And I'm also going to drag the formula down, and I do want the row to move down because I want it to apply to the name of each athlete um, in this order. So I want to get the grade for the athlete in my data set. That's this guy, comma, and table one open square bracket, eight, close square bracket, comma, and the date is equal to this date, and I don't want this cell to move at all, so I'm going to do dollar sign before the C, dollar sign before the three, comma, and also table one, open square bracket, grade, close square bracket, comma, is, so I want the average grade for this athlete in my data set when the date is this date and the grade is equal to comma this number. And I'm going to lock this in. So now 
I'm going to close the parentheses. Now I've given myself the ability to change this number and change all these numbers, essentially, when we're done with this, to automatically update this, which will automatically update our chart. I'm going to click Enter. Now I'm going to get an error. That's fine. But what we should see is that each person with a 100%, and actually, before I move forward, let's this may be rounding, right? We have 99.9%, 90 to 99.9%, .9%, but right now there are no decimals in here. So let's highlight these and I'm just going to click this button here to add, oops, this button here to add a decimal because not all 100s may actually be 100s. They may be 99 point something. So back to here, I'm going to drag this down and everyone with 100.0% should have a value here. Everyone that does not should not have a value here. So I'm going to drag it down to 31. And 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, and then a bunch of errors for people that don't. And now to finish off this formula, I don't want these errors to show up. I'm going to say if there's an error, make it blank. We've done this already. So at the beginning, I'm going to say if error, open parenthesis. If there's an error with any of this stuff going on, comma, let's make it blank. Close the parenthesis. And now I'm going to select the cell, click on these black crosshairs in the uh, bottom right hand corner, and drag it down. Now, now it's pretty easy. So I can copy this formula. I do Control C to copy it, Control V to paste it. Now I want the exact same thing, except I don't want the grade when it's equal to this number. I want it when the grade is, let me remove that quote, greater than or equal to, quote, ampersand, that is saying greater than or equal to, and I'm going to reference the cell. This number, let me lock that in with dollar signs because I don't want it to move. And also, comma, table one, open square bracket, grade, close square bracket, comma. So, and the grade is, quote, less than, equal to, quote, ampersand, this number here. And I'm going to lock this cell in, dollar time before the O, dollar time before the 6. I'm going to click Enter. And now instead of drag this down one at a time, I'm just going to copy and paste it, because I know I, I have a feeling that this formula is right. So I'm going to copy this, paste it into the OK, but now I want if I click in here, Excel is pretty cool. It shows me the numbers and everything that I'm looking at. Instead of looking at these two numbers, I want these two numbers. So instead of P6, I want P7. Instead of O6, I want O7. So now it's only going to show up if it's between these two numbers. Click OK. I'm going to copy this and paste it into the bad, and I'm going to do the same thing. So instead of looking at these two numbers, now I want P8 and O8. And click enter. Now I'm going to select these three cells here. Go to the black crosshairs on the bottom right corner and drag this down to the bottom. And notice each person will have a value in only one of these categories. That's exactly what we tried to do. Now the fun part begins when we can actually create our graph. So I'm going to go to insert bar chart, because I think that's what I wanted. That is what I want. I want a bar chart going this way, coming out from the players. And now I just have a blank slate, and that's okay. I'm going to right-click, go to Select Data, and I'm going to start adding my series. My first series, let's call it PR. It doesn't really, I'm not probably not going to show the legend, so it doesn't matter, but now for the series values, I'm going to remove that, and I'm going to select our values, I'm just going to the bottom because the chart is covering the top, our values in our PR column, which is 6 to 31, 6 to 31, and I'm going to click enter, and I'm going to click OK. Well, maybe this is probably good just for so you can see. For the horizontal axis, I'm going to click edit, and I'm going to select the names from 6 to 31, just so we can see whose value is whose. Click OK. Now we can kind of see that there. Click OK again. And now, I don't want you to worry about the way that the chart looks right now. 
we just need to get in our series. So I'm gonna right click on the chart, select data, add another series, and let's call it good. Go to our series values, and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did, but highlight everything in the good column. Six to 31. Everything has to be six to 31, or they all have to be the same. I'm not gonna worry about the, the axis. Um, I just did that, uh, really not for any reason. But now I'm gonna click add another series, okay. So we're adding a series called OK, and set in for the series values, we're going to select 31 all the way up to 6, 6 to 31 for the OK values. Click OK. And the last one, add a series called Bad. And for the series values, let's get that away, and let's select our values from 6 down to 31 right here, or however many athletes you have in your data set. Now click OK. And I'm gonna click OK. Now you're probably, well, that graph looks like crap. Uh, yeah, it does. So let's let's make this nice and big. And I'm not gonna want these these lines. And I'm gonna right click on the graph and go to Format Chart Area, Fill, No Fill, because I don't want any fill on this graph. I'm gonna to go to border, no line, because I don't want a border on this graph. And it still looks pretty ugly right now. We haven't dealt with that yet. And now I'm gonna click on one of the data series. Any of them, it doesn't really matter. So this one is the PR column. These are all the hundreds. You can see that because it's highlighted here. And I'm gonna say, Right click, format data series, and this is gonna affect all the columns, but this is gonna pretty much get the look and feel of your graph. Series overlap. Well, that can be 100, and it should be 100, because there's only one value per series. And then gap width, this is gonna determine how thick your bars are. So let's make this, I don't know, uh, almost, if, if we go with zero, then they should all be touching, and they are. But I want a little bit of space, maybe like 10% or 10. Now, one other thing that you'll notice, this is really important. This is why I added the names. The values are in reverse order, and we can switch that really quickly. If we click on this axis, and let's just do it the long way. I can right-click Format Axis, which will bring you here. And there's something here that says categories in reverse order. And if I check that, my values flip. And notice all the values are aligned with the right people. Now, I don't want this. Well, first, let me format this axis and go from zero. Click, let's say zero. Click enter, so I set it. That means it's never going to change to one and click enter. So I set it, it's never gonna change. I don't care what the major unit is because I'm actually gonna delete the axis. So I'm gonna click on this, delete it. Now let's deal with colors. I'm gonna click on the PR series, which is the blue line, and it kind of brought me here. In case you don't do that, I'm gonna right click on it and go to format data series, go to the paint can, and I'm gonna do a gradient fill. This isn't the gradient fill I want, and I actually don't like all these colors here, so I'm gonna remove that one, I'm gonna remove that one, I just like two. It's easier and more simple that way. Now the angle, I'm, on, I'm gonna wanna be 45 degrees, so it goes from lighter to darker. Well, it doesn't. you can always switch the colors, but it goes from this way to this way, or in this direction. And now for this color, or for the end color, maybe I want the end color to be this gold. And for this beginning color, maybe I want it to be a, a lighter version of, of that gold color. And now, good. Or OK, it doesn't matter which order we go in. The OK values, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to gradient fill. It kind of carries over what I did last, at least in my version, which makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to change these colors. Maybe this color here, the end color, is going to be this orange. And the beginning color is going to be 
a lighter version of that orange. And now this color for the bad, I'm gonna go to gradient fill again. It's gonna carry over my last stuff. And this is, there's no red thing. I'm just doing this quickly. I might change the colors, but for the beginning color, I'm gonna pick this red but I'm gonna go to more colors, custom, because I want this to be light, kind of like we did with all the other ones. And let's just move this up to a nice light red. And the end color over here might be a more of a bright type of red. And you know what, this red is a little bit too light, so I'm gonna go to more colors again, make it a little bit darker. That's a little bit better. Now I have one more to edit, and it's orange, right here, the good column. I'm going to go to, again, gradient fill. It's going to carry over my last one. And maybe this end color is green, but maybe it's a little bit darker than that. Maybe more. I go to more colors, like I did the last time. A little bit of a darker green. And this beginning color, I might do the same thing. I might pick that green, and I might go to more colors and make it a little bit of a a lighter green, even lighter than that. All right. Now, we can do a couple of cool things. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I am going to remove the names. Now, I am going to add data labels. So I'm going to have to do that for each series. I'm going to right click on one of the series and you'll see, you can see format data series. I'm going to say add data labels. Oh, we get a lot of zeros. That's a problem, but there's a pretty cool trick that we can use to get around this. And I'll show you that in a second. I'm going to click on one of the data labels, which actually selects all of them. I'm going to right click on it, go to format data labels, go to the bottom here. And I want them to be, this is totally customizable, by the way, you can have this be whatever you want. I'm going to have it be inside the ends. And I'm going to change the color. If I can do that. Over here to white. And I'm going to change the font to be to bond script. Oops. So I'm going to use my, I'm going to make that my whole chart. I'm going to make it 10. That's going to be the size. And that's kind of what I'm going to do for all my data labels. So the next series right here is the PR series. I'm going to right click, add data labels, and I'm going to have to do this for everyone. Click on one of the data labels. I can go to right click, format data, data labels. Inside the end, that's what I want. Make it 10, size 10. Make it the bond script. Make it white. And this one, I want to bold. I'm going to bold if you get a PR. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to click on the green now. Same thing. Add data labels. Click on one of the data labels. Right click. Format data labels. Inside the end. Make it white. Make it the bond script. Font. Make it 10. And now I'm just going to do the last one with the red ones. So I'm going to add data labels. Make them white, make them size 10, and be bond script. Right click on one of them, go to format data labels, inside the end, and red is bad. I want to know that, so maybe I make that bold too. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so how do I get rid of, all right, there are a bunch of zero values. This is really annoying. So there's actually a pretty cool trick that we can use to get rid of those zero values. And we can either do it with the data labels themselves, but that I'd have to do that for every um, label category, kind of like we did to add them. Or I can highlight all the cells where my data resides. And I can go to more number formats, go to custom. And what I'm gonna type in is, I hope I remember how to do this. I think it's 0.0, so 0, 0.0 percent will give me a percent with a decimal. If I just go 0 percent, it, it'll, it'll round up. I'm going to go 0.0 percent, colon, 
or semicolon, minus 0.0%, and then one more colon or semicolon. Okay, so 0.0%, semicolon, minus 0.0%, semicolon. That last semicolon is crucial. If I click OK, all my zeros go away. It's just a formatting thing. Okay, I just pretty much told Excel the, the format of the text that I wanted. And now let's make this a little bit smaller so it fits with all my all my athletes. I want them to line up with uh, with the people that I have. And now you know what? Let's let's take all this stuff that we have here and let's move it over. Let's move it over. We don't need it in our way. And now what if you're like, you know what, Adam? I kind of want to see the jump heights too. Hey, well, you know what? That is not a problem, my friend. That is not a problem. Let's move this over. Let's copy this grade, paste it here. Let's say um, VJ, I don't know. And what we can do is we can just copy this formula that we have here, and we can paste it right here. And you control C, control V. But now instead of the grade for this athlete, for this date, I'm just going to change grade to be VJ, and that will be their height jump height for that date and click enter and now it's formatted as a percentage but i can change the formatting to number and maybe remove one of the decimals and then what i can do is i can move this over and i can grab these crosshairs and drag this down now i have the athletes jump heights for this day and i should mention that i just randomly generated numbers uh, in this data set between 23 and 33 uh, to get this information. So it may not be realistic. Now I'm going to move these two columns or these two cells over because maybe I don't want to see these grades are displayed here. I don't need this grade column anymore, but I do need it um, for this to work. So I'm going to hide it. I'm going to right click on B and go to hide. So now what I have is I have the names, vertical jump heights, and their percent of their maximum. Okay. Now maybe I want to say, you know what, let's take this one step further and let's format the names and the jump heights to coincide with the colors here. Okay. Well, we can do that too. So what I'm going to do now is for alpha, I'm going to write a formula. I'm going to do new rule, use a formula to determine which cells to format, and I'm going to say equals if, I don't know if there's, there might be another way to do this, but this is to me intuitively um, what to do. If this cell, and let's change the O6, it's locking that in. I want column O locked in, but I don't necessarily want 6 locked in, 06 is not equal to blank, quote, quote, comma, I'm going to type in true, comma, false, close the parentheses. Take a look at that formula just so you see it because we're going to copy it a bunch of times. I'm going to go to format. And what do I want to format if that's true? So pretty much I'm saying if this cell is not blank, in other words, if it's a PR, then what do I want alpha to be colored? Well, I'm going to go to format. I'm going to make it bold, just like we did with the, the thing here. I'm going to make the font white. I'm going to make the fill that color. And I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click OK. Nothing happens. Well, I'm guessing that's because this cell is blank, and he did not set a PR. Let's keep going. I'm going to conditional format, conditional formatting, manage rules. New rule. Oh, let me go back. I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to copy what I just did. So highlight all that. Control C for me. Click OK. I'm going to go to new rule. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. I'm not sure where that'll be on the Mac, but you're going to type in a formula somewhere. I'm going to copy and paste what I just did. But instead of 06, now I want P6. And then I'm going to format this way, or now I'm going to format it in the way where if P6 wasn't blank, which is the good category, 
what I want it to look like. So I'm going to go to format. Um, oh man, I don't remember the color I used, but maybe it was this. And you know what? Maybe all the other things, maybe they're a little bit light. So I'm going to go to more colors. Let's make it light. So it's like a light green color. And let's keep it dark and not bolded. I'll click OK. And I'm going to new rule. Use a formula to determine which cells format. I'm going to copy and paste, or I'm going to paste what I did again. Now instead of P, O, P, Q, that's my OK category format. Let's go to this light orange here. Or maybe I go, uh, yeah, let's go to this light orange here. Click OK. Click OK. So now I have three of the four categories. My last one, new rule. Use formula to determine which cells format. I'm going to paste this in. So instead of Q, I'm going to go to R. That's my bad category. For format, I might do this red, and I might do the same thing that I did. I might make it white and bold. Click OK. Click OK. So now here are my four rules for this cell here. I'm going to click Apply and click OK. Now, Alpha, he's colored in that little orange color, and that's because his OK value is not blank. That makes sense. Now, if I copy this cell, we can do a couple of cool things. But what I want to do, oops, how do I do that? So I just want to paste this formula into all of these cells here. I'm going to right click and paste the formatting. And now we have it. So notice the orange lines up with the orange, the gold lines up with the gold, green and green, um, etc. Now I'm going to select these vertical jump height numbers. You know what? I actually don't, maybe I don't want the vertical jump height numbers colored that way. So I'm just going to paste it onto the player names or the athlete names. There we go. I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And I'm going to change everything. I'm going to click on this here, which selects everything on this sheet. And I'm going to change it all to that B band script type of deal so that everything is, is the same font type. And let's move this over here. And now what do we do? So maybe I call this, I don't know. Um, let's merge this stuff together. Jump height monitoring dashboard. Let's maybe make that like 20 or something. Make it bold. Uh, let's move these over here. And maybe I'll move this over here. And let's make this row height small, maybe five. And again, let's make this row height small, maybe five. Let me just select all this stuff around our dashboard here. And let's make it, I don't know, make it white for now. And let's make this, I don't know, I don't know what game, maybe this is blue color. Maybe it's even lighter than that. So I'm going to go maybe just white. Maybe the date is also that color. Make it a little bit wider. This is our kind of our date entry box. Maybe we make this row a little bit bigger, 20. He's in the middle, select date. Maybe this is merge also. Maybe this is in the middle also. And now let's just see how this works. Let's move this over. Maybe this is in the middle. Maybe all these jump heights are in the middle too. And maybe this row is a little bit bigger too, so maybe it's like 20, just to give these more space, move these up in the center, and maybe we kind of have, maybe we add some, some grid lines to these, like that, and then we can kind of line this up here. Did they line up okay? Yeah, they line up okay. Not too bad. Let's move it down a little bit. So now, just make these gray or something. I don't, I don't really know the best way to do it. I'm just kind of moving on the fly here. So now, 
let's say that we want to look at a different date. So I so this is every month. Three six four six five six 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 is what it looks like. So if I change this to three dash six. Now we know that we had one, two, we had all these guys set PRs and here's what their PRs were. And here are the guys that did not do too well, the guys in red. And maybe let's look at a five, six, things will switch. And six, six, things will switch again. He, he doesn't have a value most likely because nine, nine, eight, nine, nine. 799 we just need to add more decimals here um, to accommodate for all values because of rounding so i just did that and that's a nice thing we have control over these values if we wanted to change these thresholds we can do that and well so and maybe we want to hide this stuff if i hide it now the chart's going to go away you can trust me on that but uh so what we have to do is we have to right click select data hidden empty cells we do not want to show NA as empty cell. Show data in hidden rows and columns. Yes, we do want to do that. Click OK. Click OK. Now, if I were to hide all this stuff, let's say, my chart will stay there and we can still say, you know, 5, 6 or whatever it may be and the data will change. That's pretty cool, right? Now, I I don't know. I'm, I'm still kind of... I still want to go with this. Like, what if I want to see one athlete in my list over time? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, maybe there's something that lets us see a little bit more detail, and maybe I can do that. I don't know. Down, down here. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just rolling with it right now. Um, I'm gonna unhide this stuff for now. Let's, let's make this, make this white again down here, and let's unhide this. We've already done like 90% of the work here. So I'm gonna change, I'm, I'm gonna uh, grab this stuff here and I'm gonna paste it uh, right here. Say select athlete. I don't know, and what, what, what's the row height here? Let me just see, row height is 20. Let's make this 20 also. And don't, it depends on how many athletes you have and if you're gonna add more, you don't want this to end up uh, complicating things because remember this is an automatically updating formula for the number of athletes that you have um, but and anyways uh, that that doesn't really matter I didn't really plan on getting into this at the beginning so select athlete maybe maybe there's an athlete name that, that, that goes here and down here is their data over time so what we can do is we can do something like let's just add add some more data. Let's say date one, date two, date three, date four, date five. I don't know how many dates do we have. Three, six, four, six, five, six. We have four dates, so maybe there are just four dates in this one. Um, in this date, we want to be the maximum date in our data set. Let's say, or we could have, or we, or we could pick it. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. We could have this date coincide, but I'm just going to make this the max date in our data set. So I'm going to go equal max ifs table one open square bracket date close the square bracket comma table one open square bracket athlete close the square bracket comma. So I want the maximum date for the for an athlete if that athlete is comma whoever this guy is in here, whoever we select. And I'm gonna close the parentheses. Right now it says zero, and that's okay because there's no athlete in here, but I'm gonna type in Papa because that looks like he's one of our athletes. And then we'll get a date here. I'm gonna change this to short date. And now I'm gonna copy this, and paste this formula in here, and I'm gonna keep it the same. I'm gonna say max ifs, I want the maximum date for the athlete when, comma, when also table one, open score bracket, the date, when the date is, comma, quote, less than, quote, ampersand, this date. 
So now I'm getting the most recent date relative to this date. And I'm going to close the parentheses. I should get five, six, I hope. Good. Copy this, paste it here, and paste it here. So now I have the most recent four dates, if you will. Now all I have to do is I have to get these values. So maybe I want the colors to stay exactly the same as they are here. I'm just going to create an inverted, I guess, uh, bar graph for this athlete. So I'm going to copy these here, copy the headers, I'm gonna kick, and I'm going to transpose them. And I'm going to do apply the exact same concept that I did here for this athlete. So I'm going to copy all four of these, all four of those. I'm going to right click and I'm going to transpose them. Now we need to think about what th what these are saying. So I'm getting the, the grade for table one athlete for the athlete when the athlete is this guy. Well. I don't want to get the athlete when I don't want the data for the athlete when he's that guy anymore. I want it for the athlete when he's this guy. And I'm getting it for when the date is equal to this date. And I don't want that anymore either. I want it for when the date is equal to this date. And let's just lock in the column or row 34 so that if I paste this formula down. It won't change anything. And when the grade is equal to U5, well, that stays the same. Uh, so I can, let's just remember what we what we did here. Okay, so I'm gonna click, okay. And it was not a PR on this day for this athlete. But now I'm gonna go to this one. And again, instead of A6 for the athlete, I want C34. There are a bunch of different ways to do this. I'm gonna lock it in again, lock the C, lock the 34. Instead of that date, I want this date again. Lock in row 34. Click OK. All right, well, we got a value. So his performance on 3 6 to 2020 was good. And I'm just going to do this for the other values too. So instead of A6, I want to look at the athlete in C34. And instead of the date in F3, I want this date. And let's again lock in row 34, click enter. And I'm going to do the same thing for bad. And you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. We just want the colors to remain consistent. I'm going to lock that in again. We're looking at that athlete. And for the date, we're not looking at F3 anymore. We're looking at this date, 34. And click enter. And now all I have to do, notice O is not locked, 34 is. If I copy these formulae and I paste them here, there we go. We have his performances for each date. Now, what do we have to do to create a graph? Well, we can do the same thing that, that we did here. Um, it's going to be a little bit different, but in any case, let's just start from scratch because it's, it's a fun thing to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to create a chart again. We could actually do a line chart too if we wanted to, but I want uh, the graphs to be consistent. So let's select data, right click, select data, and we'll just do the same thing again. It's good practice. Let's go PR for the first series, select the series values, let's remove those, and let's select these ones. Okay, click OK, and let's add another one. And let's call it good. And for the series values, Let's select everything in the good columns. Click OK. Now let's add another one, and let's call it OK. And for the series values, let's select everything in the OK column. And for the last one, or bad, let's add and let's say bad. For the series values, click everything there. And for this here, the horizontal axis, let's click Edit, and let's Put those dates in and it says ones there i'm not sure why that is but let's click okay click okay now if we format this axis right click format axis let's make it a text axis and now we see the actual the right value showing up and let's click on one of the series 
just like we did the last time. Let's right click format data series. These are the defaults. Let's make the series overlap 100% because again, there's only one value per date and we can make the gap width kind of whatever we want. Maybe 100 is okay. Makes it the bars a little bit thicker. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to format these bars and choose what we want our data labels to be. But first, I want to deal with this axis. Click on the axis, right click, format axis, do the same thing that we did last time. Make the minimum zero, make the maximum one or 100%. It, it's not a big deal, doesn't matter. I don't like having the axes here. Um, but you know what? Maybe for this one, I will format axis uh, because I'm just, I just want to mix it up a little bit. Let's have the, have it be 0.25. So every 25%, there's kind of an increment in the axis. Let's make it the, bo the bond script. 10 point font. I'm going to do the same thing here. It's axis. I clicked on it. Bond script. Let's look at the 10 point font. And I'm going to remove these. Uh, you know what? Let's keep the grid lines in on this one just because um, the fill. Of the background, that's what I'm doing now. Is I'm gonna have no fill, and I'm gonna have no border around the chart. So this is our chart. I'm gonna expand this chart out, and now I'm gonna add some data labels. But, well, no, I'll get to that at the end because I want to display something different. I don't want to display the percents, although we could. First, let's format the series again. So this is the good. I clicked on the series. Notice it's highlighted good. Um, right click, format data series. And let's go to the fill, gradient fill. It carries over from the last one. But now notice the angle. We don't want it to be 45 degrees, or maybe we do. But I'm going to have to figure out what the angle should be. Is it 90? No, I want it to be maybe 180. No, 135. No, 180, 215, 225, 235, I think. There we go. Okay, so now it gets light to dark. It's the way that I want it. Maybe it's 245, I don't know. Pretty much wanted to go directly up. 245 looks better. So now for my good category, I'm going to go to my fillers. That I think was the bottom one, or maybe it was this one. Then on the top, I want it to be that green. And I'm going to click on the next data series, PR. For, right click, format data series, go to the paint can, gradient fill. And I'm going to just choose what I did the last time, which I think was that color at the beginning for the end. I wanted it to be gold. Now this series is OK. I see it highlighted there. Right click, format data series, go to my fill, go to gradient fill. And I think I picked this one for the bottom. And then for the top, I, think I picked that orange. And yeah, this is kind of a personal thing. Um, but notice, there's no bad. So the bad data series won't be formatted if I don't do something. So I'm going to switch this person. Let's go to Sierra. Notice my data flips. She doesn't have any bads. Uh, what about Victor? No, not him either. Who's who's bad in here? Charlie. Charlie should have one. I type in Charlie. I notice he has two bads. Here's here's my bad data series. I just want to show up so I can format it. I'm gonna click on it. Right click. Format data series. Fill gradient fill. And let's go to our fill colors that we use. I think that one. And then for the end color, it was a red. And now let's add our data labels. But before I do that. Maybe instead of the percentages, I want the jump heights. And if I do want that, what I can do is I can essentially copy what's in here, all four of these. Let's copy these and let's paste them right here. And I'm just going to change a couple of things around. Essentially, instead of the grade up here, table one grade, I want to get the VJ or the, or the jump height. And I'm going to change the grade to VJ, click enter. It's going to automatically go down to the next cell. Now I'm going to change grade to VJ. Click enter. Change grade to VJ. Click enter. Change grade to VJ. Click enter. 
Now the formatting is in a percentage, but let's change that. I highlight all the cells. I'm going to select number and then remove one of the decimal points. Now I'm going to select or copy all of these and I'm just going to paste them here underneath the dates. Again, one, two, three, four. I copied one, two, three, four. I'm going to paste them here and they should align up. Like if I copy these over and paste them down here, the same thing, right? PR on four, six, add on three, six, et cetera. Now for data labels, what we can do is we can add them the same way that we did up here, where let's click on the green or the good. I'm going to go to add data labels and by default, it's going to show this value and you may want that and that's great. I'm going to right click format data labels. I have the option to take a value from cells, not just this value. Well, first I'm going to move this to the inside of the end and I'm going to make it maybe I'm going to make it the band script, make it 14, let's say, cause I have more space, make it white. And now I'm going to select value from cells. And I'm going to go to the good column. And I'm going to select these four things here. And I'm going to click enter. Now notice, so right now it's selecting two things, the value and the value from cells, cells with a separator as a comma. I could do a separator as a new line, and then I'll get both values. But to me, that's a little bit convoluted. So I'm just going to uncheck this value and uncheck the show leader lines. Now what I get is I just get the vertical jump height value. I'm going to do the same thing now with this with this series or the bad series. I'm going to right click, add data labels, click on the data labels, make them 14 and the band script and white. And I'm going to right click on one, go to format data labels, move them inside the end, select value from cells. This thing will open up and I want these values. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to remove the value and I'll just be left with the vertical jump heights. And I'm going to kind of back up a little bit. And I'm going to finally, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do it for the PR and then I'm going to have to select someone else to get an okay um, and do it for that one too. But I'm going to right click, add data labels, click on the data label, right click, format data labels, go to inside the end. And again, I'm just going to do value from cells select these four here where my vertical jump eyes are click ok remove the value and let's make this the band script and 14 and bold and white and maybe i make the red ones bold too because we decided that that was important and now i'm going to select someone that's orange x-ray x dash ray and i'm just going to do that so i can add labels here Click on that series, add labels, right click. I apologize that this is repetitive. Um, I'm going to make these size 14, the band script, make them white. Right click on one of them, format the data labels, put them inside the end, select the value from the cells of the OK row right here. Click OK and uncheck the value. And there we are. I'm going to X out of that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to maybe make, oh, very important, right click, select data, hidden empty cells, because we're going to end up hiding this stuff. So first of all, I don't want that. And I want to show data in hidden rows and columns. Click OK. Click OK. If I don't do that, things are going to get messed up when I try to hide things. Now, I'm probably going to select this area here and make it. I don't know, light gray, light gray. And I can keep this blue, keep this light blue here. And maybe this box is, is black and, and, and white. Maybe I do that same thing with the, with the one up here, select date, black and white. Maybe I move this, maybe I move this over here if it fits. Oh, but notice there's a hidden cell. That's okay. It's okay. I'll move that over here and I'll move that right here and let's make this white again and now i'm going to hide all this stuff on the side 
and I'm just going to make all this stuff white across here and all this stuff gray across here. Not that it really matters. Make all this stuff white down here. Again, it doesn't really matter. I'm just a, I like I like when it looks like this. And let's move this down. Make it a little bit bigger. And now the last thing that I want to do is I'll create a drop down menu and maybe I'll hide that too eventually. I'll do it in W just because I'm going to unhide these for a second. I'll do it in W or X. I'm going to say athlete list. I can literally, or you know what I can do? I don't even need to do this. Um, I can use the athlete list that we generated here for the drop down menu if we want. Why, why not? We don't have to duplicate things. So I'm going to hide these cells again. And I'm going to set up data validation right here. I'm going to go to data, data validation. And I want this to be a list. And now the, the source of my list, one thing that I can do is I can just select all these, all these athletes. And no matter what, these athletes will, will remain the same. Or whatever values are in these cells will be a part of my list. That's probably the easiest way to do it. If you want a dynamically updating one, um, well, you'll have to update this anyways if more athletes get added just because the formulas and, and the charts don't accommodate for additions. But I guess it's cooler to have a dynamically updating list. For this, for the part of, for the purpose of this video, we're not going to do that. I'll click OK. And now I should have a drop down list of my athletes. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's make it 100%. And now I should have all my athletes in alphabetical order. If I choose Bravo, that'll change. Let me hide this one too because I don't need it. If I use Charlie, again, it'll change to Charlie's values. And we can quickly confirm this with this date here, 5-6-2020. Charlie was 79%, jump height of 24.8. And 5-6-2020, we have 24.8 as his jump height. So we're on to something here. Again, I could switch that to Foxtrot. And just to go back, remember, we can still select the date here. Let's say 4, 6, 3, 6. And now we kind of have a dynamically updating a jump, jump height monitoring dashboard. So I hope that you had fun uh, with this video here. And I don't know how this happened, but pretty cool. So thanks for watching. Um, and shout out, I guess, to to Justin for asking the question about how to get this grade stuff done. So <laughs> that happened a long time ago, but we got a grade as a percentage um, max of, for this vertical jump height or for a person's vertical jump height, the percentage of their maximum vertical jump height of all time. So we've done that. Good work and uh, and let me know if you have any questions.